Hi, on 15.2, optimization. What we want to do now is look at global maximums and global minimums. And so if we have a point where the function is always greater than the rest of the function at a particular point, then we have what we call a global maximum. Similarly, we have a global minimum if that point is less than or equal to every other point that we do have. Okay, so to locate the global maxima or and minima for the function, find the critical values and then investigate whether the critical value does give global maxima or minima. And this isn't as well defined as what we did in uh, uh, calc A, B, or B, C, but it is, uh, you just have to analyze a little bit more. And then the last one, if the region has a boundary, investigate whether F attains a global maximum or minimum on the boundary of R. So you have to check the different points that we do have. Okay. Uh, if I have this one right here, this is the similar example to what we did last time in 15.1. So then this is uh, a paraboloid, elliptical paraboloid, that is going to increase for all different values off of this minimum that we do have here. So what we do have is a global, and we're just doing this by the graph, global minimum at the point one comma two. Okay, so that is what we have. Does it have a global maximum? Well, we talked about this minorly last time. This thing will go up forever, and so there is no global max for this. Now, I could have gone through and found all the critical values too, and this would have been the only critical value that we would have had, and then we'd have to do analysis with that one too. But then, since this one continues on and you know the shape of it, then we can justify that that is a global minimum. Okay, now what if I give you a contour diagram as such, and I want to also limit my region from negative 1 to 3 and 0 to 4. What does that mean for us? And so what I want to know is what happens to our graph, and can we find a global uh, maximum or minimum given these constraints now? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot this rectangle in for me. So I'm going to go up here. So there's one part of it. And then it goes over to three. So here's another part. And I'm going to go down and then here. So we do know that we're going to have a global min from everything that we've done in the last two lessons at one, two. Okay, that's definite. Now what's going to happen is since we've limited where we're going, this is going to be kind of an elevator shaft going up and then hitting the uh, elliptical par paraboloid uh, at some edges. And so we will max out. And so it's not going to occur any higher than what we have for this rectangle. So on this rectangle is going to be where we're going to find the global max because if we did it before in the previous example, it doesn't have a global max. So now our limitations are going to make it so that we do have a global max. So by looking at this, this point right here is going to give us a maximum of two. And in fact, we're gonna have that at all four of these points. Now the question is, is are we gonna get any higher than that? Well, if I go out here, it looks like I'm going out towards three. Not quite three, but it is bigger than two and less than three. So at each one of these corners, as long as we are symmetrical, then we're gonna end up with a value that is higher. So let's check these points and see how that goes. So here are the points that I'm gonna choose because this is the values where I got furthest away from that two value. So all I'm gonna do is plug them in now. And I notice my contour lines now are off a little bit because I don't have a square root in my equation that it did give you here. So really I'm looking for something greater than four because this contour line does give me a four here. So I get an eight at the corner where I have three, four. And if you go ahead and check all the rest of these, you're gonna see what happens. And if you thought that each one of these corner points gave us symmetry, well, you were correct. So the value is always eight. And so then what I would say then is my global maximum, and so here's my global maximum value is eight, and it occurs at each one of these points. 
Now here, the global minimum is at 1, 2, but what is that value? So back to your calculus days, what is the global minimum? Well, the global minimum is 0. Where does it occur? 1, 2. Global maximum is 8, and where does it occur? Well, it occurs at each one of these points. Okay, so that's what we're doing. So really what we're doing is checking your critical values to make sure that it is a min or a max. And we have that D formula for the second derivative test from the previous uh, lesson. And then what you're going to do is check the boundary points and see which boundary points do give you a value that is higher than what you might have uh, from before. And when I say higher, yes, it could be a minimum too, depending upon how the boundary and the shape of the figure does work out. Hi. What we want to do now is example number three. So given this equation right here, we want to find the relative maxes and min. So this goes back to what we did in 15.1, but let's find the relative maxes and mins and see what, where that takes us. So go ahead and try this as practice, and then I'll do it as well and come back to you. So I can set my partial with respect to x equal to 0, and I'm going to get x equal to 0 and y equal to negative 1. So if I go ahead and plug that into here, I'm going to get my x equal to 0 case. And when that happens, I'm going to get 4y is equal to 0. So y is equal to 0. So I'm going to get a point zero zero. So that's one of my points. And then when I have y equal to negative 1, and I plug it into here, I'm going to get negative 4 plus x squared. And I want to set that equal to 0. So then that's going to give me x is equal to plus or minus 2. So I'm going to get two points out of this, 2, negative 1, and negative 2, negative 1. So these would be all of my critical values. And if I want to go ahead and use my second derivative test on this, I can set up a little table with these values in them. I got 0 and 0, and then 2, negative 1, and then I got negative 2, negative 1. And then I'm going to find my d value for those. And then I'm going to compare this value in case if I have a relative max or relative min. So if I plug in 0, 0, if I start with this one, uh, I'm going to plug in 0, 0 up here. And I'm going to get 2 times 4, which would give me 8. And then I'm going to subtract out what happens when I plug in 0 here, quantity squared. I'm going to just get my 8. So that's a positive value. So then also I look at what happens when I plug in 0 there. I'm going to get positive. So then this would be a minimum value. And then if I plug in 2, negative 1, I'm going to get a 0 here. So then the first product is going to be 0. And then I'm going to get a 2 times 2, which give me a 4 since I'm subtracting. I'm going to get a negative 4. So then that would be a saddle point. And then similarly, this one's going to give me a negative 4, and so that will be a saddle point as well. So I only have a relative min here at 0, 0. Now, is that the absolute min? Well, we can't be sure because we don't know how to compare it with other values exactly. If we knew the graph more, maybe we could. But I do know that f of 0, 0 in and around this area is going to give me a value of 3. And so that would be a relative min of value of 3 at 0, 0. Now the nice thing is, is that for part b, they give us the contour diagram. And so now they told us, okay, we want to put boundaries up. We want to put x between negative 1 and 1, y between negative 1 and 1, also give the locations of the max and min values when we have this. So let's box this in and be, pay close attention to where the boundaries are. So now a couple things to note. If you notice before in our previous example, we said that this value right here at 0, 0 is a z value of 3. If you notice over here, as I go out into this region, I'm going to keep on decreasing. In fact, I can get negative values 4 by z. So then at the point 0, 0 is not a global minimum, but it is a relative minimum. And so if I do make this boundary, though, now look at what happens. Do I ever go below 3 anyplace else? No, I do not. So what I'm going to have then is a global min 
of 3 at the point 0, 0. Okay, so that's the global min of 3 at 0, 0. Because this is the region where I'll go below 3, and that's not included in the boundaries of what I do have. Now, the global max. When we look at this analysis, we will look at the boundaries. Now, here we're going to have a value of 4, value of 4. Here we're going to have a value of 5. Now, if you notice, out to these two corners, we're going to get a value of 7. So then my global max... we're going to get a value of 7, and at which points is that going to occur? Well, in this case, it's going to be the corners of my uh, limitation here. So this would be the point 1, 1, which is also the point negative 1, 1. Both of those points will give me the global max of 7. Okay, so that's how we can read the contour diagram to figure out where are we the highest, where are we the lowest. Okay, so that gives you an idea of what we're dealing with and some constraints. So these would be what we call constraints on this interval. And what you'll have too is you'll have uh, some examples, and we'll try to do some examples in class that will give us like optimizing the volume of a box and all those kinds of things. So we want to try to do that when we get to class. All right, I hope you enjoyed this. And this is trying to look at global mins and maxes on a uh, boundary, with a boundary uh, defined for us and constraints. All right, thanks. Have a great day.